my brothers are the strong. If you do touch my clay-cold lips, your time will not be long. I work primarily with sound. I mean, I have been working with sound for many years now, but I come from a sculptural background. I, I studied fine art and specialised in sculpture and I really started working with sound then when I was a student. I'm interested in how sound can define space and the architectural concerns of sound and how it can be a device to alter individual consciousness and how it can make you aware of the place you're in where you see it in a new way, and I'm interested in how it can heighten your sense of self while making you aware of your environment. And those are things that have always been in the work. The, the architecture is quite imposing. It was when I went upstairs to the bedrooms. They've left this wallpaper there, this torn wallpaper. I mean, I, you know, I had this feeling of abandonment, a domestic abandonment that uh, I found really interesting and then the, the fireplaces each each room has its own fireplace and I and I, I could imagine sound emanating from within the fireplaces you know accessing this the space um, behind the walls flowers will fade and I my dear I ask the tears will turn the wallpaper itself reminded me of, of the story, the yellow wallpaper. So where she she be begins to see someone trapped behind the wallpaper, this woman who's who's in a house not unlike this, and she's um, there to recover after a breakdown, and she's just to have complete rest and, and solitude. But she begins to become obsessed with the wallpaper and starts to see things in the wallpaper. Uh, and these uh, these figures that are behind, trapped behind the wallpapers. I mean, that story always stayed with me, and uh, and it came back to me when I was wa walking through the rooms. And also this uh, this other story that I, I knew from childhood, the, the Edgar Allan Poe story, story, the murder on the Rue Morgue, where where again it's about this space occupied by a female uh, figure. In this case, it was a, a murdered body that was placed in the, the flue of a fireplace. But you know, I've always been interested in, in accessible spaces and uh, activating space that you wouldn't normally see with sound and uh, drawing attention to space in a new way. I'm really interested in the area as well. It's part of the borders. There's this tradition of border ballads that I found really fascinating, you know. I mean, there have been, over the centuries, songs written about the feuds that have happened, uh, you know, disputes over land and things, but the ones that are most interesting are the supernatural ones, uh, which are about, you know, the kind of border between life and death. So what I've done is record eight variants of this uh, border ballad called The Unquiet Grave. And it came from a, a pool of um, border ballads that were from the region. And so I installed the sound so that the, the voices are emanating from within the chimney breasts. Since my true love is dead and gone, what can I do but more? So there are seven in the upstairs room and one downstairs in the library. You know, it's about uh, um, someone who's grieving over the, over the death of, of their loved one. And finally, their grieving wakes the dead. So in different versions, it's the man who's grieving over his, his wife. In other versions, the woman is grieving over her loved one who's been killed at, at battle. And, you know, so there's, there's diff the, the words are changing, but also the, the lengths of each of the, the songs are different. So. They all play in unison at the beginning and then over time they start to drop out until there's only one single voice playing in, in the entire space.
So it depends on where you are in the building. It don't really changes. Like if you're in the, the bedrooms listening, you really hear each of the renditions of the song clearly. The words are very audible, but when you go out into the atrium space, that's where all the merging of the voices happens and the, you know, the lyrics merge and intermingle. Sound can really break through borders and it can insinuate itself in places where you would never expect. You know, it kind of seeps through. And that's what I, I wanted to do with the sound here. So the speakers are immured in the fabric of the building and it sort of suggests, you know, like the character from the yellow wallpaper where she, she goes into the state of psychosis, which was a kind of a, a schizophrenia, actually, known as the borderline syndrome. And I was thinking also about that, you know, it's where you don't, you sort of merge with your surroundings and you, you, um, you're, you, you, um, you lose a sense of yourself. The disembodied voices um, creates a kind of haunting of domestic space. The source of the sound is completely invisible. You don't see the speakers, so it sort of might suggest just spectral figures. My name is... 